Welcome to Let's Talk About Gay Stuff. Woo! Let's talk about gay, gay, stuff. Gay, stuff. gay stuff. The podcast where we talk about gay stuff and discuss the week in LGBT plus history. We are here, Thomas, Tony, Kendall. All right, and this week we're reviewing the week of August 11th to August 17th, and we'll discuss a few different topics. We're going to get a little, I guess, pop culture oriented. We'll talk about as the world turns the soap opera and the power couple Luke and Noah. We'll talk about former governor of New Jersey, Jim McGreevy, and we'll talk about a person who we've talked about often here, the one of the queens of drag, Lady Bunny. That'll Woo. be fun. Woohoo! So I'm excited about these topics because they're very, uh, I don't know, I, like I can relate to all of them. Sometimes I'm, we're talking about things and I'm like, I don't remember How can that. you relate? Well, I've seen Lady Bunny live in person and she's, she's been, still alive though right and, yes and she's been nice enough to tweet at us uh multiple thank you times. lady bunny yeah, love thanks. you uh jimmy greevy i remember that uh story uh breaking um back in whenever it was 2004 what was it or, 2004 uh yeah. and then as the world turns i mean uh, your boys are gay so he was watching them soap operas so yeah that's why that's why i'm like oh yeah i got i got i got memories of all these things so um, so yeah, but before we dive in, uh, anything fun happened over the past week or so? Tony had his birthday party. Oh, we did finally celebrate yeah. did you have fun? his birthday party. I turned part. 40 this week. Uh, yeah, actually, um, so for my 40th birthday, I you know had a bunch of friends to a brewery for some Sunday drinks, and then we went out in Montrose, which is the gay area of Houston. So super fun, a lot of good friends coming to help me celebrate my 40th. Um, I had a great time. I mean... I remember probably 80% of the night, and that part was really fun. I'm sure the last 20% That's was a fun big too. percentage for you, though. That's a little bit you more normally. than normal. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that alcohol gave you a boost. Shut up. You wear a name tag that says, Hi, my name is Tony, to remind yourself. <laughs> yes, exactly. They're teasing me because I do have early onset Alzheimer's, and so. Soon there will be a silver alert. <laughs> or, you know, normally Tony has a silver daddy alert because he's looking for people, but soon we'll have he's, a, no, I am in the silver daddy. The alert's yeah. over. You're a silver daddy, but we'll have a silver alert for you because you'll get lost and like, we don't know what oh happened God, to Tony. Yes. Exactly. My favorite part of your birthday party was when our little lesbian friend Gloria, oh, love we that. had been there three hours about to leave, and she said, Wait, whose birthday is it? <laughs> yeah. She did not. She said that yes, she to did. You. She said that to she Tony. She asked you, Tony. Wait, Tony, whose birthday is it? Was she serious? <laughs> no. I mean, yes. <laughs> she realized what she had said. <laughs> it was funny. And of course, Kendall retold that story. Well, like actually, so times. the first time, so this was probably about four or five years ago. My friend Abby and I, our birthdays are one day apart. So we just said, okay, let's get a bunch of people together on a Saturday or Sunday to Carbock. And so it was just mass text, hey, everyone, go to Carbock Brewery at, like, whatever time. So Gloria, like, our friend Gloria, we love her. All she drinks is Bud Light. So she goes up there. And at that time, Carbock, you couldn't get multiple tokens. Like, you got one, like, you would pay, like, however much, and you were only able to get, like, you got, got three regular tokens and a special token. So she goes up, and she uses, like, her, you know, regular tokens, whatever. And... At that time, the only thing you could get with a special token was a double IPA, so it was like 10% alcohol. So she goes, what, what is this token? What can we get with that? And we're like, oh, you need to get Rodeo Clown. She goes, what is Rodeo Clown? I'm like, oh, it's, it's a lot like Bud Light. And she goes, oh, okay, I'll get one of those. <laughs> so she goes up, and she takes one sip, and she's like, holy fuck, what is this stuff? Well, she was adventur- adventurous at your party, though. Like she was, I was, I was asking her. I'm like, "What are you gonna drink?" Because normally she drinks Bud Light, and like you said, that at the breweries they typically have a higher alcohol content. And um, yeah, she was being adventurous. Did she have any of the meth that was passing around in the uh, men's room? No, because she goes to the ladies' room. Oh, because she's a lady. Because yeah. I'm a lady. As wait, more, did, more for the birthday. Wait, boy? at the party there was only one bathroom, so maybe she did. There was only one bathroom. How uh, how uh, progressive was that uh, that brewery there? Thank you. It was gender mm-hmm. neutral. Actually, they um, like during Pride, like two weekends in a row, if you wore something rainbow in, you got like some kind of a discount on beer. What? Yeah. When did they give them a holler? Like, hey, exactly. You guys want? And they actually posted on their Facebook and Instagram, like, hey, everyone, it's Pride weekend. If you come in in Pride gear, you get like I don't know five dollar pints or something like that. That is pretty. Well, cool. I was disappointed because they only had one glory hall. <laughs> 
And I felt like they, that was underutilized. You know, that well, opportunity. Well, I said, <laughs> I want one glory hole, and I'm on the other side. Well, That's it. Was, it. <laughs> it was Kendall's, you know, uh, pink eye that was staring everyone at the other side. It was just like... <laughs> <laughs> like I'm not gonna put my mouth in or my my penis in that, anyways. Uh, yeah, no. in my pink eye. In your pink eye. That's how you got it. <laughs> but anyways, uh, pink you know, eye from the pink eye. <laughs> I mean, I know we're off Pride Month, but I, I mean, to that point, I mean, the, the fact that you've got breweries. There's a bar down the street. Brewer? Breweries, uh, and it's a very like straight brewery. I mean, yeah. There's a couple of bars around to where where I live here, and in Midtown, breweries don't Houston. have uh, sexual identities. Hey, if uh, companies can you know ban or have religious rights, and then then breweries can have a gender Identify identity. As yeah. Heterosexual. Uh, but uh, but the, there's a couple of um, bars near uh, my part of town here in Midtown where they had you know, rainbow flags and such during Pride, which, oh, nice, and they were yeah. straight bars. So which was kind of nice to see you know pro- progress because ten years ago you wouldn't have seen that. Even five years ago you weren't going to see that. Even three, yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> that's cool. We've we've come a long way. Although I, I feel like you know we've to some extent we've we've almost like slingshotted way past like uh, a reasonableness. I I say that because mm. uh, on they're Twitter, too accepting now. <laughs> well, it's not too accepting. It's just like over apologetic. Like I was on you know on Twitter recently, and um, there's sorry, one, okay. one guy was like uh, and it wasn't so much on the well I guess it had to do was related to um, being gay, but the the song uh, old old town road. Like that recently broke the record for being number one at uh, the longest time. Broke Mariah Carey's record, and one little guy on Twitter was like, "What well, little guy? He's got like twenty thousand followers." But he was like, "Everybody who's complaining about this song needs to stand down because you know this is a big moment for people of color and for gay people." And everyone just like shot back at him, like, "Hey, wait a minute! First of all, the the song that the previous song that had held the record was by Mariah Carey and Boys to Men." We're all black, or Mariah's half black, right? So you had that aspect of like, first of all, they were black. Second of all, they're black. You don't have to say people of color. And third of all, like, who cares? I mean, it's not so much who cares about the gay thing, but like, we're being overly apologetic. And so where he was trying to be like, hey, everybody, I'm super woke and understanding. Everyone was like, no. So then everyone just attacked and trashed him. <laughs> yeah, because it's wow. like, well, and, and the people that were saying, hey, you know, just call people black people, we're all black people. They were like, hey, you can call us black. That's we're cool with that. You don't have to say people of color. But he was, and then you saw him trying to apologize. You know, saying, "Well, you know, I just didn't know Mariah Carey's a half, you know, uh, you know, half black." And so it just got very like you saw someone trying to be overly like woke and like I'm down with everything to being like <laughs> getting backlash from the people that he was trying to protect, like yeah. or trying to stand up for or be an ally to. So I don't know. It's an interesting world we're in, and I think. You know, the the current president has kind of stoked some of that. It's just like Reagan, he's, he, huh? Reagan? Yeah, the current. What year are you in? Which one? Wake up, Kendall. <laughs> uh, it's it's just one of those things where I think he's the nineties uh, were a hell of a day. He, 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 he he's caused these things for everyone to overreact on both sides. You've got people that feel overtly like they feel okay being uh, homophobic or racist, and at the same time, you've got people that are overly apologetic i was telling you guys earlier like the guy that uh uh when i was walking the dogs and forgot my keys and my phone and so i couldn't get in and the the guy was like well i wouldn't normally let you i would not have let you in had you not had those dogs and i'm like well same dude i wouldn't gonna let you in he was an older white dude so he was just looking at me and i'm like i'm wearing a polo shirt with some you know like yeah yeah, but but he could have i mean it not you're assuming it's because you were we're in texas it's a hispanic assumption I mean, yeah, but be careful with all those assumptions because then. Okay, I mean that's fair, but I, I, but I feel like I could also make that that same assumption. I'm like, I'm not saying that's the only reason. And granted, when people ask me to open the the gate for them, I'm a little suspect. But it's just kind of like he didn't have to make the comment, but he did yeah. because he was trying to put something out there. So, just fine. Yeah. But like I said, I probably would have told the same thing to him. I just I feel like. So we'll put the race and homophobia piece aside. Like, um, it's interesting because like now just neighborly things. Those are things you would do, you know, back in back in the eighties where you yeah. would just and, and before that where you just walk up and ask for a cup of sugar. Like if your neighbor walks knocks on your door now, are you going to answer it? Nope. Nope. 
<laughs> so I mean, most are you like most? I never did. Yeah. So I was a door to door salesman for, <laughs> you know, <laughs> my after my freshman year of college. So like I'm sympathetic to like people opening the door, but now. I remember one time I lived in that, Kindle. we lived in that townhome and the neighbors were knocking and ringing the doorbell. I'm like, I'm not answering that. And all they were trying to do was tell us that Morky had gotten out and she was, she was basically Aww. loose. And so <laughs> I was like, then I felt badly, but uh, I don't know. Interesting times. I'm, I'm guilty of it as well, but it's just one of those things. So, um, so anything else going on this week? Any good reads, good, good uh, articles or anything that you guys caught? Not really. Kindle. Like Midweek in LGBT news. You, you getting on your uh, on your get on your nap schedule? How's that working out for you? I reserve about a good four hour chunk in the middle of the day, every day. Mm-hmm. You do look well rested. Thank you. Yeah, the <laughs> never mind. The uh, so also, and you guys catch the debates. I mean, we've got some time. Actually, I did not. We... Unfortunately, no. How were they? Uh, I liked the first one. The second one was a downer. The first one had Elizabeth Warren. Bernie. Bernie Sanders. Who is the second? Kamala Harris. Joe Biden. Cory Booker. Okay. I think Warren's going to be the nominee. So after the debates, um, I haven't. I was so busy this week. I didn't read a lot of news. Was there a lot of like, okay, these are the two or three front runners, or? I don't think much. Uh, the media does not want to make that. They feed off and make money off the. Who could it be? Is it going to be Marianne oh, yeah. Williamson? You know, so they're not going <laughs> to realistically, and they don't know. They want they don't want to over unless you watch MSNBC and they are they seem like they're all in for Biden. But even like my Facebook feed after the first debate, I feel a lot of people were posting Harris Warren, and I didn't really see a lot of people post about the debates this time. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's the time when, when it fell, but I, I like in terms of the time of the time in the summer but i don't know I, I think like i said msnbc i was listening to the news recently and and they they seem to be all in for for biden like how could people be attacking him and obama's legacy obviously that's what he's trying to run on uh but it's just like well the things on immigration and the environment and trade i mean people had the, took those issues with obama while he was president from from the left so i don't see that as anything different i mean yeah. the whole reason bernie got popular he was going against some of Obama's policies, and Hillary was trying to ride on extending uh, his Obama's policies. So it, it's not a new argument. So why MSNBC is flipping out, I don't know. Yeah, and I do feel like, um, you know, Obama was more of a gradual change type person. And if whoever was immediately elected after him, if they were a Democrat and continued that, maybe that would be resonate. But I feel... We're in a completely different world. I mean, we are completely upended from that, and I think it's kind of like any pendulum. Like, we've swung so far the other way. The people that don't like what we have are so far the other way, and they don't want, like, kind of an incremental, you know, they want somebody radical, Yeah, I feel. You know who's very political on Facebook and very intelligent sounding? Marianne Williams. <clears throat> um and very pro Bernie Sanders is my second favorite person on earth. After who? Tony. Oprah. 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 Thank you. Is Lady Bunny. Oh, she's all really. Over. As we talk about our first topic, she okay. Lady Bunny to me is the funniest celebrity out there. Yet her ninety percent of her Facebook page is like paragraphs and paragraphs of political stuff. No way. And it's all very intelligent, she's and it makes sense. She's all in for for Bernie. Yeah, she's Bernie oh, she and nobody else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bernie, your best. Yes. So, what do you know about Lady Bunny? Like, oh, what is wait. your? I think we just had a flip uh, flip of the script. Like, no, my my yeah. point is that you were going to go last, but go first. Go ahead. So, um, what I know about Lady Bunny is not a lot, really. Like, pretty much what I've learned from y'all the last couple months. Had like, you heard of her before? No. Okay, I know her in the early two thousands going to gay bars, they would play her at Wigstock. Really? I guess the biggest impact she's had on uh, LGBT life would be her Wigstock legacy, which is this big festival they had every year from 1985 to 2005, with a few years off in between, were these up-and-coming, like diverse, different group of drag queens that... Um, are completely different and it made a lot of people that we consider I mean if you if you follow drag stuff kind of made them household names because it was a huge festival in New York that the gays followed 
They actually just brought it back. She brought it back in 2018. And there's a documentary on HBO that we talked about a few weeks ago <laughs> called Wigstock. Or is it just wig? It's wig. It's wig. Yeah, just wig. Um, she brought it back with uh, Doogie Hauser. Yeah, Neil Hauser. Patrick Harris is yeah. in it because he is uh, Hedwig and the Age Angry Inch. And, you know, the ones the younger kids know about, Willem, Bianca, you know, a bunch of the young, new generation of drag queens. Is Bianca really that young? I'm kidding. I'm just Young kidding. in the oh, sense. Yeah, yeah. Lady yeah, true. So Lady Bunny was born John Ingle. She's bun from bun. Chattanooga. Bun Bun the Bunyan, uh, August 13th, 1962. So she's an old-ass queen. And at, at time of recording, as far as we know, she is still alive. Yeah. Uh. I like Lady Bunny because she, her humor is so out there. She described it as demented. Everything she says is a shock factor. And the reason I like that is because people get so sensitive about everything. Yeah. Like stuff that doesn't even impact them or matter to them. You can't make that joke because it's like, lady. What do you care? Yeah, it does not affect you. It does not come from a place trying to insult. Sit down. And Lady Bunny just does not care. So she has like a following of people that think the same way. Bianca Rios is the same way. Bianca Rio? Yeah, Bianca Del Rio. And they're uh, actually very good friends. There's a, I think it's about an hour and a half, two hours. You can find it on YouTube. She did a Derek and Romaine show in like 2005 interview with, she kind of co-hosted with Bianca Del Rio. The funniest, I have listened to it probably 10 times. Yep. And could quote the entire thing because it's so everything she says is like, oh, my God, you know, your grandma's crying in the corner if she's in the room. Very awkward leaving. Never talk to you again. But Lady Bunny is mostly known for wig stock. She was RuPaul's roommate uh, in the early 80s in Atlanta. They moved to New York and they were in that whole club kid culture. And they kind of in the late 80s, RuPaul started becoming very famous and Lady Bunny's trajectory kind of turned more towards a different style of drag. Like mm-hmm. RuPaul was very much like commercial and cover girl and you better work, all that kind glam. of stuff. Glam. Yeah, glam. She had to be kind of generic, somewhat safe for the children. Lady Bunny was still in New York doing her shows and doing Wigstock. Um, a lot more polished, but she was still that like, quote, offensive Lady Bunny. Um, but she, most of the gays know her. She was on, she was a dra- uh, dra- oh, blah, 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 blah. Meow, meow. <laughs> She was a drag judge. I'm glad we switched that you're going RuPaul's first. RuPaul's <laughs> Like you would have made it till the end. <laughs> university. From 2010 to th- 2012, where she was one of the hosts. Uh, I felt like they didn't use her talents. Did y'all watch that ever? No, you didn't. I, you watched it though. A little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it was where they took straight women in that had no confidence. And made them, in, oh, made, and them made, made them into drag queens. Uh, they were it they were about three seasons. They were mentored by other drag yeah. queens, yeah. And when they got canceled, she says, "Well, they couldn't find any broke down, sad, pathetic women that aren't weren't already booked on the next season of RuPaul's Drag Race." <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> so they had to cancel it. Right now, she's doing a show. She's known for being a DJ as well, and she's doing a stand up show called Pig in a Wig. Huh. She's. Hilarious. We actually saw her in Houston. I heard we were walking past a gay club and Easter I heard, Sunday. yeah, on Easter Sunday. And I heard one of her songs cause she does parody songs. And I was like, surely they don't have lady Maybe bunny here. here on Houston on Easter Sunday. And sure enough, we walk in and it's, where was it? What hamburger Mary's? Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So we watched, of course she was hilarious. Yeah. She was the surprisingly, it wasn't very crowded there. It's, I mean, which is, was it interesting that she was there and I would, I'm saying unannounced because we didn't know mm-hmm. that she was there. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I, I don't think it was entirely unannounced, but like she uh, it wasn't like widely advertised. Uh, yeah. And because I mean, on Easter Sunday, you would think that'd be a big catch. It's a big, you know, going out day for the, for the gays. Like, but, uh, but yeah, we didn't, uh, there was no one there. We easily got a seat. Now you go to hamburger Mary's on a Sunday brunch and you can't find a seat because of all the straight women there. Uh. Progress. She was hilarious mm-hmm. though. She was. She likes to do her little songs and her little twirls. I like to imitate her, Tess Spencer, and he is never amused. But 
One day I'm going to make him laugh about it and as I do it. One day, Spence. <laughs> you like her humor, too. It's one of the first, the few things we agree on. One of the few things we agree on. Yes, I think she's hilarious. She uh, um, is, uh, I don't know, her sense of humor is just out there. And I'm like, I get it. That's fun. Like Derek Romain, that show, she was talking about um, getting, uh, she's having anal sex and um, doing someone with scabs on their penis and she's like I like it when they bleed because it feels like I'm on my period oh my god <laughs> oh that's offensive <laughs> I love uh, it. yeah I mean and she's very political though I mean to, to that so Super it's she, smart. she holds a, I mean so it's not just I'm gonna gr- start following gross her. yeah she's hilarious um, yeah she will she's she wasn't scared to you know bash Obama when Obama, Obama was president I mean, she's definitely on the the far out Bernie wing. I mean, she's been not holding people, calling people out for just liking Buttigieg because he's gay. He's just like, uh, no, what's he stand for? So, um, I mean, again, she's for her. she's out there with the with the Bernie crew. Yeah, she makes you think about your knee jerk liberal beliefs because you know, oh, we love Pete because he's gay, or we love so and so just because everyone else does. She's like, no, do you actually know their policies? And she makes you think, like, do I actually have a period? And uh, as a guy, you know, is that what that bleeding is? Oh, no. God. <laughs> now I know why people are offended. That's what the one star rating is. Uh, we only have one. But if you want to do research on Lady Bunny, listen to the Derek Romain show on YouTube. And it sums everything you need to know about her humor is on that show. It is hilarious. She's out there. She had like Bianca Del Rio cracking up. She had other, uh, which you know I think is a is a testament because Bianca Del Rio. She was on an episode of uh, In Bed with Joan Rivers, which was a, oh, a yeah. like a web series that Joan Rivers had, and Bianca had Joan Rivers cracking up, which to me was like, oh yeah, because like she's ultimate, raunchy, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so to the and so and and why did Bianca have uh, Joan Rivers? Because she was joking about which you know some people are going to get upset. But like child molestation, she would talk about, oh, my uncle, you know, you know, chose me over my sisters because I gave better head. And it's just like those sorts of things like you don't say and people get offended because yeah, that's talking about child molestation. Bianca, though, tells a lot more canned. She repeats a lot of her lines, and which is in her what she calls Rolodex of hate. No. So if you are kind of a fan of Bianca's, you heard a lot of it. I know Bianca from around 2000 when we both lived in New Orleans and I would go to her gong show. I think it was on Wednesday night at Oz. And yes, she's hilarious, but it was the same. You know, if there's an mm. Asian in the audience, she's going to say, open your eyes, bitch. You can't see me. You know, or if there's a black person in the audience, she'll be like, smile so we can see you. Or she's going to say the worst thing to any brown person. Selena is dead. Yeah. So she recycles a lot of the <laughs> same ones, but she's hilarious. To me, Lady Bunny is just like crazy, right. schizophrenic, not safe to be around, but fun. Yay. She'd, she'll say things like, Today, ter- Tony turned 40. He finally caught up with the age of his penis. <laughs> <laughs> like, just random things like that. But her delivery is like sing song like that. It's just like, Kendall's sick. He finally found out that he had an STD. It's, just <laughs> like, well, it's like, well, we all knew Kendall had that. But it's funny when she says it. <clears throat> what does she say about RuPaul? I told RuPaul to act his age, and he died. <laughs> <laughs> That's you, Tony. <laughs> oh yes, totally. Uh, that's, that's Twenty funny. years ago. And then she said, "What was it, Rihanna?" <laughs> oh no, Dude. I forgot who Rihanna dated, and then <laughs> it hit me. <laughs> Chris Brown. Yeah, she crazy. Oh my God. But she has her own distinct style. She does that parody. She normally parody songs, um, based on laugh in. Are you familiar? You're familiar with Laugh-In, right, Tony? He's old Please. enough. Yeah. Even though he's at his age. Where they would come out of, this was, I think, in the 70s. They would, the beginning of the show, they would come out and, like, tell a one-liner. So she bases her shows on that, which completely goes over the head of people, these 18, 19-year-olds that love her to death. But it's based on that giving one-liners kind of parody. And she does parody songs, and they're always hilarious. And she travels all the time. She does, and she sings too. Like when she's doing her songs, as, and like as Lady Bunny, she she'll sing her own songs, which is I mean she lip syncs them all as well. But I mean those are her that's her voice. Like well, so does just being lip sync. <laughs> and Madonna. 
True, 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 true divas. So that's Lady Lady Bunny, Bun Bun. I mean, you guys are uh, to me are looking as old as Lady Bunny. Y'all are both fanning yourselves like a pre, like a no. Like oh, menop- I just fan when I'm mad. Like menopausal <laughs> women here. So I get insulted that's okay. on the podcast. No offense to our menopausal women out there. You think I look pre-menopausal? Thank you. That's a compliment. <laughs> oh, and I'm like w- ten years into it. What are you okay. talking about? <laughs> <laughs> it's like that's so why I'm you're young for my age. That's why your boobs are sagging. All right, <laughs> so that's Lady Bunny. Okay, Yay. so uh, what about uh, speaking of old queens? What about Jim McGreevy? Well, yes, he's in his sixties now. Oh yeah, okay. Yes, um, yeah. So Jim McGreevy. Uh, actually, I feel like a broken record every week. I'm like, oh my god, I'm so excited to talk about this <laughs> subject this week. But I really am because. I know I asked y'all like if you'd remembered mm-hmm. it, but to me this was like very impactful when it happened because I was kind of like at a um, at a place where I was like struggling with coming out, and this kind of like affected that, which I'll talk about later. But um, so Jim McGreevy, for those that don't know, he was the governor of New Jersey, and he actually was forced to resign because he was gay. He you know had a he was married with kids, but had a an affair with a a male, so. Was he cute? I to to oh, steal. Oh a, my to god! Steal I totally a, forgot to Google his boyfriend. To I'm steal like, a phrase from Tony. Yes. Was he cute? Is he cute? I mean, Jim McGreevy's cute in his own way. He's very like, you know, professional. He's, like he's in his aged day. well. Well, he's yeah, yeah, aged yeah. well too. Yeah. Like, I mean, um, but so Jim. McGreevy, I wouldn't kick him out of the out of bed for eating crackers. Isn't that what the saying? No. Is? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. No. Yeah. He's cute. And, but I did forget to because, so part of the scandal was his boyfriend was like much younger. And so, so Jim McGreevy, he was the governor of um, New Jersey, and he, you know, is a career politician, very successful in politics. When he ran for governor, he won by a pretty wide margin, became governor, and he was actually pretty successful up until the scandal. Um, but when he was appointed, or when he was elected governor, and he was assembling his... Yeah, he was appointed. <laughs> and he's assembling his cabinet... This was right after 9-11 because he was elected in 2002. And so he appointed as his head of Homeland Security a really young guy that had no experience. He was not even a U.S. citizen. And his only really experience was he was in the Israeli army. And even the media was like, something's up here. Like, because he, you know, when he appointed him, he's like, oh, this is such an important thing for our state. And that media is like, yeah, you're right next to New York, and who the fuck is this guy that you appointed, you know? And so there was chatter like, what's the deal with this guy? But New Jersey politics was very, like, pay-to-play. So they were like, well, is his uncle rich and wanted him to get a job or something, and they donated a bunch of money? Like, um, gay so, for pay, apparently. Exactly. So he was gay for pay, pretty much. Well, he wanted to be because— Aren't, aren't we all to a certain extent? I know I am. Yeah. But <laughs> you can do it for free. <laughs> So this guy wanted to be gay for pay because they had an affair for like four or five years. And, you know, Jim McGreevy married kids. And when they kind of like started to split up, the guy was like, well, unless you pay me off, I'm going to out you. And so that's when he was like, you know, I'll just come out myself. And then everyone's like, you have to resign. Like nobody's like nobody would support him to continue in the party, whatever. So he was basically forced to resign as governor because he was coming out as gay. And. You know, I think it's interesting. I do feel it's like a bit of a double standard because we've had presidents that openly had affairs. I mean, like even Bill Clinton was having an affair with an intern in the White House. And there was a conversation, but he... We've pulled up the picture. Oh, he is hot, yeah. Tony's whipping out the fan again. (gasps) Oh, my God. He looks like... Late birthday gift. It's okay. He looks like Wilder Vildorama. Wilmer? Wilmer Vildorama from the uh, That 70s Show. Oh, he does, yeah. That's a very bad picture. But that's he's in a tux there. Yeah. Sorry, Tony. He's cute. So this was two thousand four? So yeah. this was in two thousand four, yeah. Um and so yeah, he was basically like forced to resign and it was I mean, you know, his wife was pissed about it and everything. Um so the reason that I like I've actually so he read it he wrote a book, I read his book, his wife wrote a book about it, I read her book, like I've always just been, this really kind of hit me in the gut when it happened because, um, so, you know, I'm from small town Montana and literally like, it's a very bigoted town. My, um, you know, I had an older brother that was very, you know, I mean, at very public events with family and friends all over the place. He would like 
ridicule me for being a faggot. And so I'd have to like, okay, I need to get out of here and be by myself. So it was like, um, I just kind of grew up my whole life as if you want to be gay, you're going to be ostracized. That's kind of your option. I think that's why I was very molded in like, I'm not going to come out. I'm not going to come out. And so right before I left Montana, it was my senior year in college. One of my mom's really good friends. I kind of looked at her up to her as a role model. She had like slip of the tongue, like mentioned something about me being gay. And I'm like, what? And she's like, Tony, she like sat me down to talk to me. And she's like, look, everybody that's ever known you knows you're gay. And she's like, most people are cool with it. Like you need to get over this, blah, blah, blah. And she's like, she even said, she goes, I've been in love a couple times in my life. She goes, don't ever go through life and not experience that. She's like, you know, she had this like, so it really kind of got me thinking about, oh my God, do I want to come out or not? You know? And like, so for a couple of years, like I kind of uh, really like obsessed about it. Like it was at the forefront of my mind every day, like, oh, you know, I was really struggling with it. So I moved to New Orleans, get my first professional job. And again, like, you know, all the new hires hang out together. We're all like 22. We're like partying all the time. So everybody's like hooking up with people at the bar. They're all hooking up with each other, whatever. And so, you know, after a while, I was like, Tony, you never do that. What's the deal? Like, and so like, but some you still of, don't. Well, I know, but at the time, I couldn't even talk about it. Did, but so, did you ever, like, drunkenly make out with the girls? Not really, no. no? I was just, yeah. And so... Um, I mean, that's your right. As, I mean, that's that's not your right. That's your obligation as a gay man is to make out with all those drunk girls. I mean, they're looking... That's why they have you around. No, I'm kidding. No, I, I even then, I feel like... And a lot of... Most of them knew. And so, like, the way they would ask me, like, you never date anybody. Why? Like, you could tell they were just like, tell us, you know? But, I mean, and so... Um, I knew, like, part of me was like, yeah, if you come out, like, they're still going to be your friend, like, most of them. But then, like, I did work with this one guy who, like, he started with all of us, and he had an earring. And day one, his boss is like, lose the earring. And he's like, I have every right to wear this. And, I mean, everybody, like, because, you know, it's all these, I was in the drilling group, it's all these old white guys. And so everybody hated him because of that, and they ended up pushing him out. Like, he got fired, like, two or three years into it. Your friend with the earring? Yeah. And I mean, at that time, if you were an engineer for an oil company in the early 2000s, great job security, right? Like, right. So this struggle kind of perpetuated of, God, I really want to come out, but I mean, I, th- I could lose my career. Like, I could be ostracized by friends and family. Like, and so I was, like, struggling with this, and I distinctly remember, I distinctly remember this as um, – it was very impactful for me because I had heard, like I'd seen something where he was going to have this press conference. It was rumored he was gay or something. And I was like, I'm going to be glued to that TV. And I, I remember him coming out. I remember his wife there. And when he did this, I just remember thinking that, and at the time, like I was very like into my career, but I also had this dream of like getting into politics and being like a state budget director or something, you know, what a nerd. Yes, I mean, my, literally my dream was to, like, spend some, a bit of time in industry, get some experience, and then be, like, the budget director for a state or, like, the city controller or something. Or no money being in, you know, local Yes, politics. and, like, give back to the community. Aww. But that we was support your dream. Literally, yeah. and at the time, all I read were political biographies, and I was just, like, so into politics. And when this happened, I just remember thinking, that guy just lost everything he worked for his whole life for some dick. And really in my mind it's solidified don't ever come out because i mean like seriously that's the way i view this i was like if you ever come out you'll have nothing else like and so i do feel like this probably regressed my coming out by a a while um but yeah and so i read his book i read his wife's book um that's that's why i was so interested in talking about this but i i do feel like um it was important in its own right at that time because you know, I mean, it was a double standard that he had to resign. I mean, there was a, I don't know if you remember this, but like five or six years later, the South Carolina governor, he was straight, but he completely went missing for 14 Argentina. days. Argentina. Yeah. Nobody could reach him, which to me, that's affecting his work, right? right. Like if it doesn't affect your work and it's like, like Bill Clinton taught us, taught us you can get a blow job in the, you know, in the office and still talk to senators on the phone. So, I mean, exactly. Way to go, Bill. And this guy. And there was a conversation. They talked about impeachment, but, and so this guy was like, "Yeah, you're, you got to resign. Nobody's ever going to support you." And then the uh, South Carolina governor, but he resigned. 
He no, he finished out his term. Oh really? Yeah, he finished out his What's term. What's his name? He, he Mark Sanford. Yeah. Sanford. Yeah, Sanford event, yeah. Eventually, he got elected to the House, <laughs> right? So I remember being frustrated with McGreevy because he agreed with the shame. Like he was so apologetic about being gay. Yeah. And what he went through, I wanted to be in 2004. Like fight, like you're agreeing that what you're doing is horrible. Yeah. Please fight for your own job. His wife was so mad. She did. She, a, oh my she god. She did an interview years later on Oprah where you could tell. How she did was I still know you were going to bring up the Oprah interview? Mad. <laughs> oh, she is bitter as fuck. Which she has a right to be. Yeah. Well, she her husband had an affair. I mean, yeah. Forget the well, him being. But gay. it was more so. I think. She married a fraud, I think, in her yeah, head. Yes, and so actually, I, I feel it's two things. I, you know, because she, she says, I would have never married if, if I knew he was gay. And she goes, I never would have had kids with anybody that was gay, which I thought. But um, she did say, she goes, you know, his entire, like, looking back, she goes, his entire life was just planned and choreographed. Like, so, it like, it's almost like she felt she was a ploy, like, I need to be married with a kid in order to yeah, have a like political life. Yeah, like, none of life. it ever I was in love with him, and none but that, of it that was his second marriage, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it was, yeah. 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 And so, um, yeah, oh, she's very mad, bitter. Uh, and I do feel she felt like um, she was not personally, but used in a way. Like, like he needed somebody... To yeah, have the political, she yeah. was his beard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, exactly. She, did she did she have her own political aspirations? Like, no. was she a Hillary no. Clinton? No, type? I mean, I think she was like she was a spunky little she Jersey. Was, she was yeah. a stan- girl, Greek girl. She was a stand by your man. Why not? Oh, what, oh, she enjoyed uh, being what, first lady of Jersey. Yeah. What did, what did uh, I, Tammy Wynette Hillary stand Clinton? by your man? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I do feel like, and I, I, I mean, I'm sure she was in love with him, or yeah. she wouldn't have married him. Yeah. But I don't think she married him for. The fame or the... I think she either liked him or wanted, like, a normal life. Yeah. That's why I think she was so pissed when... It's got to be tough being a politician's you know, spouse. Oh, yeah. I mean, I think about, like, the Buddha judge, right? And Chastin. And like, yep. So they got married, what, last year? So they've been married only a year. And imagine being that, like... And he was already on his way to being yep. wanting to be president. Like, yeah. he had just run for DNC, you know, chair... And then he, you knew he had his sights yeah. set. So he's like, how's that? Like, is that part of the proposal? Like, by the way, um, we're going to get well, married. Yeah. Like and I'm going to be that ambitious. And Chastin doesn't seem like that. I mean, well, I, I, I don't know him, right? Just his personality seems like, hey, I'm just a fun, lovable guy who's a teacher and very passionate about what I do. Like, I mean, going from a teacher to, in Indiana to being like, no, I want to be the first. Oh, he's loving it, though. The first person. What does he call it? The first dude? As Greta, Greta Van Sustren, first Sustren's. gentleman, or first spouse, gentleman, or yeah. yeah. Uh, first gentleman, I guess. But yeah, so so what happened to to McGreevy after that? So, so you know what? And I I've I actually thought about this because I think when I was younger, I used to think of everything in such black and white, and I thought, oh my god, if that ever happened, it ruined my life. But you know, I think as you know, life goes on, right? No matter what happens to you, life goes on, and so. Spoken he, like a true forty-year-old with some a, a little I, whispers of gray. You know, I in couldn't even think like that before Wednesday. Like Tuesday, I was like, uh, "No, like everything is black and white." And I'm like, "Ah, uh, you know." <laughs> I do think Wisdom. the reaction to the ones that have been outed. Remember, we talked probably four episodes about Barney Frank. Yeah, and he was outed for housing a gay prostitute. Yep. In the '80s, and his next election, he won by his biggest margin ever, and then. When he officially came out, let's see, he officially came out, won by his biggest margin, I believe it was, and then the there's a stripper, I mean a, a prostitute that lives with you, even bigger margin. And I think it's because he was unapologetic about well, it. And I think there's something about authenticity. People value authenticity. To this day, when I think of the whole McGreevy thing, I don't think... Oh, what a pioneer for being gay. No, I don't either. I think that's I a man either. who was had so much shame. Yeah. It's almost a setback for and the you, community. And you know what? Part of um part of it maybe he was very religious. Very and actually you said, you know, what happened? So after that he uh decided he got his master in divinity and he wanted to become a priest and he, he got denied. So he did prison ministry for a while and then so he actually met a, a guy now it's been his long term partner for years. Um but he did prison ministry for a while, and it's kind of interesting because one of the reasons when he announced that his this guy he was having the affair with was his head of Homeland Security, 
it was just a red flag. Like even the media was like, something's up here. And everybody was kind of trying to figure out for two years and it took them breaking up. I mean, how did they figure it out? They didn't figure it out. Like the reason he came out is the boyfriends, they were starting to break up. And he said, I'm going to out you if you don't pay oh. me. So he came out. Oh, God. But for two years, so when he announced that he was appointing him to head of Homeland Security, his own party, the opposite party, the media was like, something is up here. This guy has no experience. We just had 9-11. They're right next to New York. He, head of Homeland And the way he presented him was he goes, head of Homeland Security is a super important job. That's why I'm appointing this guy. And they're like, who is this guy? I think he could have no kept experience. his job had it not been the – component of corruption basically the, well the, and so the, sorry, the reason that um people you know people were like didn't immediately go to the gay thing is uh new jersey politics and including jim mcgreevy are very pay to play very corrupt so speaking of what he does now he got his master in divinity did prison ministry and then he actually worked for jersey city and he was like the manager of training and employment for the whole city and he did that for a number of years, but then he was let go because they said, mm, we didn't audit and we found like misappropriation of funds, but he claims it's a political move. He goes, I can back up everything, but because I was not part of like some political clique, I got ousted. They and so, so you don't, but you don't know who it is because it's New Jersey. But anyway, so he's, um, he was back into politics and it sounds like he was very, very astute politician because I feel like you're never going to make it through all these political positions to governor unless you're really astute at weaving, especially because I've heard the three most corrupt states are Illinois, Louisiana, and New Jersey. Like, they're the most corrupt states. But um, that's what he's doing. I, I wonder why he didn't try to get back into politics. I mean, there are plenty. Uh, with mm-hmm. Anthony Weiner, uh, yeah. was the other New York politician? Um, Spitzer. Elliot Spitzer. Spitzer, Elliot Spitzer yeah. I mean, they've been in scandal. Donald Trump. I mean, and they're yeah. like, hey, yeah, we don't care. We're gonna, we're gonna keep trying. We're gonna keep trying. Because so, I think it goes back to the shame that McGreevy felt, especially if he was that religious to go. Basically, he wanted to be a monk or whatever. That's interesting, though. Can I like like I for a while thought I wanted to be a priest, and so I'm like Did wondering really? if like that's one of the things that like. And I, I'm now I'm trying to like remember back. I mean, I think part of it was like it wasn't so much the. I think it was more the Catholic guilt than, which had to do with both that I liked having sex with women and men. That it was just one of those things that it was. Uh, you're like you could put that all aside if you just like devoted yourself to this religious cause and so uh, yeah. and so you didn't have to deal with it. Which you know I. Th- yeah, I would have been able to. I, I hope that I would have, if had I gone that path, I would have been able to navigate it. But I guess I'm. It's not excusable in terms of why people, like some of those priests, do what they do to children and molest children. But you, you could almost, again, not s- sympathize is the wrong word, but you could almost understand. Like if they don't know how to control that, and all they're being taught is like, no, 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 that's yeah. bad. Like they they don't have a proper way to channel. A, a natural nerd yep. urge that happens to them. So again, not excusing it, but I mean, it's just a weird situation. But I, I like I said, I can somewhat think like if you're battling with these demons, you think, okay, what well, demons? Homosexuality was not a demon, yeah. but when you're taught, like you were saying, you know, all these like it, at the time, ten year, twenty years ago, everything was telling you don't come out because it's going to impact your yeah. career, your life, your relationship yeah. with your family. You're like, well, if I go pre a priest, I reserve, you know, I'll I'll put away all those things and I'm just going to devote myself to, to God. Like it's a, it's a weird place to, to kind of go. And I mean, I can understand why there are so many challenges in like the religious realm nowadays, but. And it's know. so interesting because, you know, I know what it's like to like grow up in that. Oh my God. You know, like if you do this, you know, you're going to lose everything. Um, and literally it took me about seven years from the time I left, like, my home and got out in the big world till I could really start coming out to people. And all I had to re- work like deal with was like, okay, society won't like me if I come out. If you have the religious thing, it's like, you know, if I die, am I going to hell or heaven? You have that to deal with. And so that's an even bigger, holy shit. If I pursue this versus, um, you yeah. know, not. Yeah. No. But I mean, I feel like he could have gotten gotten back. Like McGreevy could have gotten back. Oh my God, he politics, totally could. Yeah, and decided... it makes me, yeah, it makes me wonder why he. It does make you wonder why. And he is. I do feel he was very um, 
which you can't rise to governor if you're not like charismatic and things yeah. like that. And but he, I mean, he's an attractive guy, like and he's yeah. charismatic. But you know, like, one thing that maybe because I do feel like, and his wife said like. I just realized when all that happened, looking back, like his entire life was just choreographed and planned. And but that's every closeted man. No, I know, but I mean, versus um, like other politicians, where maybe, you know, like because if we have these views, maybe people thought, "What a phony all along," and maybe that's why he. Maybe I don't. I don't know if he did or didn't try to get back into politics, but maybe if he did, he didn't have a lot of traction because it's like you're a phony versus like you said, if somebody's like, I was in this scandal. And I think like, you know, Clinton, once it happened, you know, he just kind of owned it. And I mean, like, Uh, no, he did not. If there had not been a little black dress with his sperm on it, Oh, no, I know, but they, yeah, but they got, yeah, yeah, but they got past it. But then, like, I feel JFK was very open and said, well, I guess Clinton didn't really have a political career after that. I mean, he, I mean, he finished out his term, but that was it. It's not like he ran for re-election. Or... Uh, he w- Clinton? Bill Clinton? Yeah. Well, what would he run for? That's what I'm saying. I'm saying, like, he didn't... Oh, he had yeah. already reached the pinnacle. And, yeah. yeah. But, like, JFK was very open and people didn't... I, he, I feel he would have, like, won by a landslide. If he, Like, if JFK, like, would have lived and would have, had, like, had other political options, I mean... People just didn't care because he, like, kind of owned that he had affairs. Well, the press back then thought it was none of their business to report it. Yeah. But not to digress, there was a huge scandal that was about to come out about him sleeping with several times, basically having an affair with a mob princess, basically. They had Russian ties. Oh, really? And it was so compromised. You know, she was so such in bed with people that were enemies of him. That there was no, the press was like, we're about to blow this. Do you think? And it was going to come out. It, it had already come out, but it hadn't really caught on with the media. Um, and then he got assassinated, so it was. Not to digress, mid-point. but who do you think assassinated him? Do you think it was the CIA? No, I think I think it was Cuba. I think it was Cuba. The intern is screaming. Cuba using the Harvey Oswald. You do? Mm-hmm. Hmm. I don't know. I've actually or the mob. I've I've actually read a couple of books. Not to digress, but um, I read a couple of books that um, because basically, like the one shooter story, it's impossible. Like as many bullet wounds as he had, and like he was traveling, and where that person was, that they could have all entered, and so um. It's impossible there was one shooter. But the Warren Commission... See, I've seen a documentary that very much laid it, debunked all the debunking that it was had to be more than one. Like, for instance, a big argument for the fact that he... We are getting way off topic. We are, but, but one, it'll be two minutes and we'll get back because it's <laughs> interesting. One reason they said he was shot by multiple people is because the front of his head was blown out. And they were like, of course, because if... a bullet goes in the back of your head it's gonna burst through the front yeah and blow your brains out the front which is the opposite of what a lot of people think in terms of like i'm gonna shoot you in the front of the face and it's gonna blow it all off oh anywhere how, how do we go back. how do we go from uh, mcgreevy to jfk we i would like to finish this conversation after the podcast we'll because. have to okay. pin this for uh like, a, like and a tweet i think you should invite kendall and i on our spoopy podcast to talk about this because Obviously, we feel differently, and I we both have a lot of evidence to back up our opinions, and I feel I have a lot of circumstantial justification for, for why the CIA wanted him gone. Hmm. And I mean, your well, little huh. Russian hooker story is adds to that. I so, mean, anyways. So I had a good segue when we started talking about McGreevy into my next uh, uh, topic. So but, let's backtrack uh, until but, that. Yeah. But now I, I feel like I don't know where we go. So what we'll do is we'll take a nice little uh, divert and talk to uh, uh, U-turn. Speak, speak to our sponsors. Where would you like me to leave off so you can like pick We're up? We're good. We'll just, uh, we'll just go back to uh, thanking our sponsor. Hey, uh, are you a small business owner trying to do it all? Take marketing, for example. Nowadays, your business has to have a Facebook, Instagram, Instagram Twitter, LinkedIn account. Who has the time to take pictures, write posts, and
and get them posted online, let alone like, comment, share, and respond to followers. Don't worry, Economy Works is here to help. Let the Economy Works Talent Network help you do more marketing so you can grow your business. Economy Works. When we work, the Economy Works. Find out more at economyworks.com. All right, so again, I, I JFK, um, McGreevy, <laughs> I guess I don't know where to go. Uh, a few questions. I don't know if you queens are going to know these people because I don't, I don't think you're in this space. So if I say Luke and Laura, does that ring, ring a bell? No. Nope. Are they lesbians? Luke and Laura, Nikki and Victor, John and Marlena. Sounds like a bunch of daytime Hope and Bo. Couples. Lillian Holden, none of these guys. These are all super power couples uh, of the soap opera genre. So from going from um, from uh, soap operas like General Hospital, Guiding Light, uh, uh, Days of Our Lives, uh, to As the World Turns. And As the World Turns produced a, another super duo, uh, Luke and Noah. Anyone anyone know what Luke? I've heard of them because they were on the Oprah episode. Were they? They got married and it was a huge daytime. Uh, I don't think they got married. Ratings. Okay, no, no they didn't get married. But they had the first gay male kiss. So uh, this week on August 17th, you had a Luke and, and Noah called Nuke because we like to give everyone a, you know, a, a nickname like that. Uh, they were on As the World Turns and on, again on August 17th, 2007, they had the first ever gay male kiss in daytime. 2007? In 2007. Woof. Are they cute? Are they both cute? Yeah, they're cute. Yeah. <laughs> one's blonde, if you're into blonde twinks, and the other one's a, a strapping, dark-haired man. Uh, I'd so the dark-haired guy. It, the smooch instantly became a pop cultural moment. Um, and, you know, while a lot of people were watching it, it gained its most most of its popularity on YouTube. Uh, they got millions of views right after the episode aired. Uh, people wanting to follow the storyline. Um, and it was the first fully realized romantic male couple in daytime. Uh, and it was really kind of a storyline that set apart from, from other ones. Uh, the plot line, because I did a lot of fun research um, last night when I was doing... Uh, Laundry. I was listening to all these episodes, and by the way, YouTube does a nice job. If you want, if you're interested in this plot line, or if, if you've followed it in the past, and you're like, I want to relive that storyline. YouTube does a nice job of, of job of showing, like, I, I think there's one to like 200 clips, 250 clips uh, of just the good stuff. Because like soap operas have multiple plot lines, it just has this of plot line. Legally copyrighted. Um, well, so <laughs> well, no, but to that point, Black like most of the t- most videos. of the time, they take it off. Like the the you know pr- production companies will take it off. As the world turns, said no, we like that because at the time they're not on the air anymore. But at the time they were they were saying, hey, look, this gets people eyes on us, and ideally they're going to come back and and look at our. They'll be interested and watch us like when we're actually live. So um, so that so they were fine with kind of keeping the the pirated versions from the. Well, the I remember fans. the gays used to say. The world's not going to stop turning if I have a boyfriend. But then it did because it got canceled. Dun, dun, dun. As the world dun, turns, dun, 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 right? Uh, when did it get canceled? Uh, so the show got canceled in 2010. So Thanks, gays. The, so <laughs> not because of this, though. Um, so their, their plot line. Again, obviously they were gay, but one of the things that people appreciate – appreciated about the the plot line it was that was you know their homosexuality them being gay was a was a factor but the stories weren't really about like traditionally those when you had gay characters they were either you know they didn't really have a storyline or their storyline you know revolved around ha- uh, hate crimes uh, or other kind of dramas not associated with their you know their trying to develop a a romantic relationship so this this storyline really kind of evolved their their relationship was it a secret affair in the show uh no i mean it was kind of so the the way the uh um the the plot line works is like so the two met uh, while they so there was one gar- gay character, uh, Luke. He had, he was openly gay, and then Noah appears one day uh, as an intern, uh, along with with intern. yes, with Luke and uh, and another character uh, who is a female character who Noah Lick? eventually started Lick and Boa. No, oh. uh, eventually started dating. So there's these three characters. They're all friends. One's a you know Luke, Luke and Noah, and then a uh, a woman character. That's and so Noah who Noah is. Uh, 
uh, <coughs> eventually is, is is closeted. So he's trying to live this this straight life. Like it's not out that he's closeted. You just kind of know like yeah. something's like going going on with this character. <laughs> and uh, uh, so he starts dating this girl. Uh, and he's trying to kind of live his, you know, it's his straight life through that because he's got a strict military homophobic father who's trying to like, who's it keeping his like eyes porn. on on his son. Well, what sounds like a porn is the moment on, on August 17th when they first kiss. So what happens is, um, Luke is putting on a, a tie on Noah and then they all of a sudden, you know, Luke leans in to, to put the, the tie on a little closer and then they have this this gaze. It's like the gay, you know, twink mm-hmm. uh, porn look that they have in each other's eyes. It's like, wait, I didn't know I had to pay for this plumbing thing. It wasn't that, but it was that it was that oh, kind of keep going it was that, that. <laughs> it was that kind of look there. And so so they so they get, they stare into each other's eyes and then they look like Noah the straight one kind of leans in and, and then they start kissing and so and they kind of went at it for a couple of seconds. Whoa. Yeah, so that was uh, that was that nope. was kind of their plot line. <laughs> of course, the uh, the 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 interesting thing is like like anything else. I mean, they they their relationship manifested into any other soap opera like. Uh, a plot, you know, plot twist. So when, because because Noah's father was a homophobe, he was a military guy, was a homophobe. He tried killing Luke because he didn't want Luke to imp- like basically make his son gay. What? So yeah, so he staged this. Uh, and I watched all these episodes last night, which again it was nice that they all just were strung together. It's like a Dateline episode. But so so the dad invited. Um, he invited Luke to a fishing trip with Noah and Luke. He's like, well, I want to go on a fishing trip. Like, let's go, all the three of us go on a fishing trip. So when they go on this fishing trip, what the dad is doing is he's plotting to, like, he takes his rifle, hides it, and he's plotting to kill uh, Luke. And so he's about to do that. He's he's aiming through his rifle. He's about to shoot him. And then all of a sudden, Luke's parents come out of nowhere because they realize, like, oh, my gosh, this guy's a murderer. So they come out. They push the gun. They wrestle the gun. But anyways, there's a shot fired. Luke falls. He's in the hospital. He's on, you know he's in a coma. And all of a sudden, so they, they thought the, the dad, he ran off, right? He <laughs> ran off. And then all of a sudden, he winds up in the hospital room. And he, then he tries injecting this, like, lethal dose of whatever into Luke's like IV, yeah, these guys are like, what the hell's happening? <laughs> so he tries to kill him again. They finally catch him, and no um, they they find <laughs> they find out that Luke's dad also killed, uh, no, not Luke's dad, Noah's dad also killed uh, Noah's Aww. mother. He killed Noah's mother, wow. who was apparently a prostitute. So, um, so yeah. she will not be missed. Yeah, it is a soap opera, and so okay, don't be mad, but this sounds like. When you're like a little two year old nephew, is like, and then, and then, the yeah, dinosaur? this is really then, good. Well, now he's into like, it. it now track? Track? No, I think it's funny. It's so, good. so then, so Noah, no, Luke is paralyzed. He's like, he can't, he can't feel his legs. He's paralyzed, but eventually so they he get got the, dumped by his boyfriend. They get the, <laughs> like, like any good Ew. day, he would have like, date, yeah, dumped him. But no, they, they tried to work it out. And then, of course, their relationship continued to have. God, so they were like a downs. major plot line. Yeah, then. yeah, yeah. Uh, so they were, but then they weren't. So that's kind of the back, like, like some of the the feedback, right? So they had this first kiss. It was the first time, uh, you know, two men in a gay relationship kissed. Uh, and so obviously, it got all sorts of feedback from fans. Uh, you had the conservative groups, the American Family Association. They opposed it. They said this is the promotion. And of you the know, gay a lot lifestyle. of these daytime TV soap opera people are like. You know, stay-at-home housewives, small-town America, yep. anti-gay. So you had a, a group out of Mississippi uh, saying, hey, we don't like this. This is promoting the, the gay agenda. You know, I was watching a news clip oh, earlier. the gay agenda. Uh, yeah. I remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I missed that. Yeah. Me I too. That. There was another cl- uh, news clip I saw from, stop our meeting? From, <laughs> from Headline News. You know how they have those, like, Hollywood reporter shows? Uh, <laughs> you know, they had a conservative and a liberal on there, and the conservative was like, I'm fine if they're dating, but they don't have to be kissing. kissing. Like, that's not a thing. Don't like, shove it down or throw yeah, it. Yeah, pretty <laughs> much. Like, I, he probably does wish he, you shoved it down his throat. Exactly. Like, you know, he was shoving it down everyone else's throat. Luke. But they also <laughs> had another backlash from, from the, the fans who were like, hey, uh, we're cool with this. And, you know, why aren't we seeing more kissing? They wanted to, like, to see that mostly gay. relationship <laughs> evolve. I mean, there were episodes 
uh, after that first kiss, well, they had a first kiss and then they had a second kiss and there was a long distance between the time they had the second and the third kiss. Um, they, so when they would like almost kiss, either there was a, a Christmas episode where they were coming in for a kiss and then the camera panned away to the mistletoe and then, uh, but everyone else was kissing and then there was a Valentine's. The Jews got mad because it was, we hate Christmas. Right. And then there was a, then there was a, it was, it was 2007, it was 2007, so there was no Twitter, so it wasn't the wild uproar. People were writing letters and those got lost and no one read them. But then there was also a Valentine's episode, which was really what triggered people, uh, is that, you know, everyone in this scene was kissing, all the straight couples were kissing, but uh, for this, for this, uh, for the gay couple, for Luke and Noah, they wound up hugging. And that's when the fans started coming. What? Saying, Why did they just hug? Wait a minute. Yeah, they were like, this is, this is something, you know, that, that is intentional. So they started to write uh, Procter and Gamble, which own as the world turns, demanding that Luke Prostate and Noah and Gamble, sounds like. kiss more. <laughs> they said uh, they wanted to see them kiss all the time and uh, kiss the way that. Or just be equal. Like, so they got my letters. It's well, not everybody else is kissing, but it's like Jesus. Well, like, they, yeah. well that was their point. Like, let's let them kiss the same way the heterosexual couples do. And no, so we do it much better. <laughs> So what they did is they they triggered a campaign of sending Hershey's kisses to the uh, one of the VPs of programming at CBS to get it like they were like, you can write fan letters. But if you send because and the, it was inspired by a guy who'd uh, who'd done an, a previous campaign like this. And he, he said, like, you know, we can write the fan letters. But if you send something like a product that's tangible to the head of programming, then they're going to get the point. And so they and inundated they like the programming office kisses a day. with so Hershey's if kisses. I say something offensive about kissing they'll start people will start sending us kisses gay should not kiss i prefer the uh, white chocolate kisses you would probably say something like vodka and red bulls are awful <laughs> and you're like i i hate I hate uh, bullfighting. Wait a minute. We do hate bullfighting. Never mind. He's I like, know. I love bullfighting. Yeah. They're like anti-bullfighting. There you go. Bull. That's it. That's it. <laughs> Good call. Uh, they actually also started a website called LukeAndNoahFans.com, which was the, had a countdown of the days, Get minutes, out. and seconds wow. uh, from the first to the second kiss. It was 211 days. So we think about that. 211 days, almost a year uh, from the time they had that second to the, to the third kiss. And so obviously they That reminds me of... Wait a minute. It was that long? Yeah. That reminds me of, uh, what is that show that's about to go off with Cameron and Mitchell and... Uh, Modern Family. Modern, Modern Family. Family to where it took them forever to have the gay couple kiss on there. And they had so many countless instances of the straight couples kissing and being affectionate. But even in like as recently as a few years ago, this was probably eight, eight years ago, people were like, why are they never allowed to kiss? Isn't that weird? I, I remember, touch. like, um, I used to work with this guy who was, like, super religious, super involved in his church, very anti-gay. And he was telling a story where there was this guy at his church. His, this guy actually worked at the church, and everybody knew he was gay. Apparently, he was very flamboyant. But he was, you know, like, never dated anyone, whatever. He was light in the loafers. Yeah. But he never dated anyone or whatever. And so everyone was kind of like, mm, he's, you know... Joseph, the little gay guy, whatever. It's a free it, spirit. Yeah, everybody loved, and they knew he was gay. Like he was peculiar. And so, That's but they're like, well, used to say. He was he's queer. peculiar. But he's as queer. long as he, you know, and my mom so used then, to say he's funny. He's funny. Joseph actually finds a boyfriend, and it's like he's bringing this guy to church, bringing him to church functions, and they're like, get rid of him. And so they fired him because they're like, it was okay for him being gay. It was okay that he was gay, but it was, like, not okay that he was, like, bringing people around or whatever. And so I was like, would you rather have him, like, go into the bathhouse or whatever? Like, I mean, the fact that right. he met a guy that he's like, I want to introduce my coworkers and church friends to this guy. The guy must be pretty legit. But it was like, mm, mm, mm. if I'm seeing it, like, I, if you're gay, it's fine. If I'm seeing it, uh-uh. Just don't right. put it in my face. Right, right exactly. Just well, don't I mean, rub put it in, in my face. face. <laughs> you're single. You need yeah, your you, face is you, very lonely. You need that. It's a good, it, it, it's a good exfoliant. That's why exfoli I shaved. <laughs> <laughs> um, you need to put a hemorrhoid donut on yeah. your face. But it is, like, it's like, it's a little oh, as long that. as, if they're gay, it's fine. But don't, like, so if they're gay... But if they're kissing, mm. yeah, I yeah, don't, ew, 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 David. Okay, together. Ooh, David. You know, you would tell, we could tell that story. Thomas and I were in New York, and some guy stopped and said, "We're walking in the middle of what 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 street? Like, in somewhere in Manhattan, or just walking." It was actually near. It was at Skyline West Park. Yeah, 
And uh, it was a nice day. Someone just... stopped and looked at Thomas and said, "Is you gay?" <laughs> and he's he looked. He was like, "Yeah." And he looked at me, "Is you gay?" And I said, "Yeah." He said, "Y'all gay together?" We said, "Yeah." Okay. <laughs> and she just she, is you gay? He just kept y'all gay together. He was like, and he stomped it out from there. Again, we're in the <laughs> middle of the street. We're like, so in he the just median. randomly was walking. Yeah, down he the was street, just walking up to you, and he was like sashaying, like stomping it okay. out, like, and then yeah, just it was not a street man. Yeah, it was just. Was like, he cute? Absolutely not. <laughs> oh, woof. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, so to this power couple here, uh, they did. You know, it was a it was a big storyline, right? So they got. Uh, you know, they were listed by uh, Fame Ten, which is an entertainment news and gossip site, as like one of the top ten essential storylines in in soap history. Uh, in two thousand eight, Entertainment Weekly uh, named it one of the seventeen greatest soap soap super couples, uh, and TV Guide said it was one of the top sixty greatest soap opera moments of all time. So it was a big, a big deal for not just the LGBT community, but for the soap opera world in general. Of course, we know the soap opera world was always just kind of pushing, pushing the boundaries. I mean, they, you know, over time they would talk about abortion and interracial couples, and um, you know, these things were all like things that were happening in society. They would kind of bring them to the forefront. I mean, people would marry their sisters or brothers or their stepfathers or become possessed by you know demons yeah. or come back from the dead and and so those were all things but you know so the fact that you know this storyline kind of you know um uh, you know leaped in front of all those as like a, a real storyline that resonated with people i think was 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 pretty cool do you guys watch soaps growing up no well, i mean i was at school but <laughs> um, but there was a very i forget her name but there's a very intelligent famous author feminist that is was on Watch What Happens Live with Andy Cohen, and she was obsessed with all the Real Housewives show iterations. And she's like, that is the new soap opera. Like, if you think about it, it has the same kind of arcs. Ha- yeah. and but, but before you villains go... Villains, and there's affairs, yeah. and there's all this kind of stuff. But so you guys, neither one of you watched soap operas growing Never. up? Yeah. They were so slow and boring. And well, I didn't have TV growing up. So one of the things, I was reading an article, like kind of the death of the soap opera genre, and like, yes, the housewives things are there, but it was a professor who taught taught like soap opera as a, as a college course, right, as part of the media types. And... His his point was like soap operas were important and they lasted so long, you know, over fifty years, because they were they had these dramatic and crazy storylines, but also it was a way it was gossip almost a sense. Of, but I resonate with this. It was like it was a way like you'd see what Luke and Laura were doing, or, or in this case Luke and Noah were doing, and you would say, you know, you would talk to the people watching it with you, like do you think they're gonna make it, like what's gonna happen next, and so all these sorts of things. And I remember talking to my my grandmother about these because I would that's how I started watching them during the summer. Yes, I went to school as well, but during the summers, like I would we would watch these things. That's how I would funny. bond with my my oh, not yeah. not the only way I would bond with my mom, but one of the yeah. things we would do is like. Mom would record uh, the soap operas on on the VCR. I often had yes, to, the VCR. Yeah, I often had to do it because mom couldn't figure out the VCR, so we had to do it. So my sister and I, like especially during the summers, we would watch the soap operas during the day, and then we'd watch them again with our mom at night. And so it was just like a way we kind of bonded, and then we would talk, we would gossip yeah. about them, like we gossip about everything else. She's like, do you think Bo and Hope are gonna make it? Ooh, what's gonna happen? I think. Soap operas are bigger than ever. We just don't call them that because the production value is so much better. Big Little Lies, Handmaid's Tale. Um, there's so much appointment, like yeah. really good quality that could have been considered soap operas. I don't. I don't know. I like soap operas. I mean, like a telenovela. I mean, there there's certain dramatic effect on like soap operas and telenovelas I, that are very different. I, I do feel too like soap operas. The handful that I've seen, I just feel like it does seem kind of like. You can tell they're acting, and it's kind of, it's it's like not as they're very I, cheaply made. Well, yeah, and it's like I don't know if it's like B actors or but you can just tell they're acting, and it's fake a bit. Um, but it's funny when you were like, "Oh my god, I watched all these episodes," and I didn't know you watched them as a kid. But I remember when I was in high school, my high school English teacher, we were talking about soap operas one day. And she goes, oh, my God, the reason I never watch soap operas in the summer is I'm afraid I would get addicted, and I couldn't give it up They're when I so went addictive. back. Yeah, so she goes, 
that's why I don't even watch them because I'm I know I would get addicted. Like, I watch well, two if you're hours from the straight. South, they're not soap operas. They're my stories. <laughs> my stories, yeah. Gotta watch my stories. No, I would watch them with my grandma all the time. Like when I stay there, like I said, watch them with mom. My sister and I would like watch them, and my sister and I'm five years older than my sister, so I, you know, we were Lashky kids. So here I was you know 11 and she was six and we'd watch them and then we'd reenact them and we'd have like i would plot these storylines we'd play we'd pretend and her best friend would selena would come over and we would like play what we call it beverly's and so we'd like pretend and we just starlight executives <laughs> we had this whole like scene like you know we're gonna i'd pretend like we were at these fancy restaurants gay, huh? yeah that's what i'm saying i'm like how did i not really beverly. like hone in on this gay thing <laughs> yeah. uh but no, yeah so we would <laughs> we would, like, oh my God. We would I think they've yeah. evolved to much better things for instance Go back to Modern Family or I'm just never a Friends person, but let's say Friends or Will and Grace or whatever. Sitcoms existed, but they were like Dennis the Menace and yep. the uh, you know, But the soap opera We've evolved from mm-hmm. those types of like generic well, but we haven't though, because to your point, like Housewives is what a thing that you know that that are basically Real people doing the things that the soap operas do. I mean, flipping tables, slapping people. That's Better that's soap opera stuff, right? And now these yeah. housewives are doing that to real people. I mean, people. I do feel Beverly. like soap opera, or uh, yeah. I mean, it was Beverly's the restaurant, and we were, worked at Starline Executives. Oh. Like, I do feel like the soap opera is. I mean, I feel like there's like back then there's a market, now there's a market. I don't think like people have like went away from them, or I I, I feel like there's. A lot of people like probably still watch them now. I mean, I feel they're probably now as popular as they ever were. Yeah, like I'm, for that sake, I feel like I, twenty years ago or now, I would. I'm not the soap opera watching type, but the people who are, like, I know. Yeah, if it's on TV, like if I'm somewhere and they are playing playing Days of Our Lives, I will tune in because they still have the same freaking actors. Like people well, that so, were watching it. Like my mom will talk about this one character, Nikki Newman, and my grandmother will for that started in the '70s. That woman has had like 18 facelifts, and she's still on the. Well, and that's on another there reason why I feel like um, the handful of episodes I did see, I just got the sense like. If I watch this 10 years from now, it's like later that day. Yeah. yeah. Like it's such a slow moving. Yeah. 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 A year can, you know, a, a day can take, you know, five weeks. But, yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's fun. I mean, like I said, we, we, I mean, not only did I watch them when it was a bonding episode, but like I said, we'd reenact them. I mean, my sister and I in the grocery store, there was an episode in one soap opera we would watch where a woman was getting run over by a car. And in the grocery store, I would chase my sister with a grocery cart like I was running her over at the car. And those are the something dumb things that I did. Anyways, it was this, although uh, monumentous occasion for the uh, new uh, Luke Nuke, yeah. or Luke and Noah. And that uh, is, I feel the fact it was a daytime versus yeah. that's very monumental. It was not it was not the first time. You know that had happened. There was a lesbian kiss actually in the 1970s on the soap opera Young and the Restless. It, they weren't a lesbian couple, but there were two women that were friends, and they wound up staying in the same so were house. Were they lipstick lesbians? Well, yeah, they were. Well, I'm then sorry. see Catherine that Chancellor. Count. If anyone, I feel listening. like a lot of people uh, want to see that. Well, they're soap operas. Right? You're not going to yeah. see any butch like butch queen. They were all exactly. very pretty. But I, mean, I feel if it was two butch lesbians, they'd be like, eh. no, so, especially yeah. in the 70s. I mean, it was all yeah. they're all dressed up to just lounge around the house, right? That's the soap opera life. But uh, they were living together. They wound up touching hands one day. One of the women went in for a kiss, but. <clears throat> Excuse me. There was nothing. There was nothing romantic. I mean, yes, there was one trying to make a move, but it wasn't like they were a couple after that. Um, there was a first gay character on As the World Turns that appeared in 1988. Um, there was an HIV storyline on General Hospital in the 90s. So the gay, you know, gay characters had been around in soap operas for quite some time. And My then man. even after that, you know, they the the soap operas uh, their storylines evolved. You had your first same sex wedding. Uh, in in the 2008 2009 time frame, uh, with a character called Bianca and Re- characters called Bianca and Reese on on All My Children, and then you had uh, a couple of years later on the uh, story Days of Our Lives, you had the first male same sex wedding uh, that was between Will Horton and, and Sonny Kiriakis. So you had what these, year was that? The that was sex? in uh, 2014. So a okay. couple of years later, but yeah. Um, I mean, point is, We're like, like the soap operas have have evolved. Uh, and even in 2015, you had a transgender character that was introduced on the on the uh, soap opera Bold and the Beautiful. So overall, uh, you know that what that storyline did, though, back to to uh, Luke and Noah, that actually increased the 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 
you know, the target and coveted viewership of the 18 to 34 demographic. Um, because while most soap operas were losing viewership at the time, they were actually, as the world turns, ah, was gaining. Point. Yeah, yeah. Partly though, because why they get that, that attention was because of YouTube. <clears throat> so YouTube, yes, it was starting to make its heyday. That's a good point though, because I do feel like soap operas are kind of an older person's thing, right? Like, I mean. Yeah, for like what, yeah, yeah. exactly. And I mean, Hispanic boys apparently. Yes, um, I said older people, s- southern boys. <laughs> but to your point, I mean, uh, as the world turns, for example, it debuted in 1956, right? So it you know, went a long, had a long tenure until it ended in 2010, um, 52 years. So, uh, but these soap operas again, they gained popularity because they were you know it's dramatic, longer than Lady Bunny, <laughs> dramatic storylines. Uh, they introduced all, you know, they tackled all of society's big, you know, uh, controversial issues, uh, AIDS, abortion, interracial couples, same sex couples, all those sorts of things. Uh, currently, I mean, as we noted, it's a, it's a dying genre. I mean, there's only four, uh, soap operas that are, uh, that are still around today. Young and the Restless, the Bold and the Beautiful, Days of Our Lives, and General Hospital. I mean, largely these have been taken over by, um, cheaper programming. I mean, what used to be, uh, you know. So what's on daytime now besides soap operas? Right. So you've got like talk shows. I mean, oh, uh, Good yeah. Morning America has like gone from you know two oh. hours to like six hours. I mean, it's different. Let's type be honest, of- though. When soap operas were huge, there were hardly any channels. Right. Now, Three. yeah. People. I mean, there were many reasons for the demise of soap operas, but I don't even have cable. Yeah. Do you have cable, Tony? No. You don't. Not, none of us have no. cable. No. We just pick and choose what we want to watch. Spencer's trying to get cable, but on. I just want TC. No. No. Oh. But yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a dying thing. And then with the, you know, plethora of like uh, communication channels or, or uh, video me- uh, mediums yep. that are out there, YouTube, Netflix, Hulu. I mean, it's hard to get people's attention yeah. on there. So like I said, it's a dying breed. Although, like I said, when those things are on, if I see it on television, you're going to see my head snap and be like, what is Marlena doing? So it's fun. Just kind of last note on, on, on this, uh, this couple here. Uh, the, one of the writers at the time is the, cause this couple stayed around from, from again, when they kissed in, in 2007 until the end of the show in 2010, uh, they, they said, you know, they recognized the importance of the storyline and said, Hey, my goal from, from the beginning was always just to normalize these relationships as much as possible, you know, to make them part of the fabric of the show. So that was kind of a, a big thing for, uh, for, for the writers. They saw the, the, the importance of the value of kind of putting this story out to, to the public and making sure that folks realize that gays are just as normal as everyone else. So. So I, I mean, like, I thank you guys for letting me do this topic because, like I said, I got to catch up on my stories, all my, like story. awesome. my storylines. I got to catch up. You and your stories. Are Beverly you going to do your story. research for another? And now year. we're going to call like, you Beverly. I'm going to watch. No, we went to Beverly. You're like next year, I want to do this again. So I need to watch soap operas every day for a year. I get to start <laughs> watching Days of Our Lives. There's got to be something. I can talk about that first same sex uh, um, marriage of, of the two guys. And those boys were cuter. Anyways, uh, any anything else before we wrap it up here? No. All right. So good. We put it all on the table. We put it all on the table. Tony got personal. I talked about my soap operas. <laughs> Kendall talked about his wanting to be Lady Bunny. So, uh, all right. So thank you for listening to our podcast and kicking with us today. A special thank you to our sound producer Spencer. Welcome thank back we from missed Canada. You. Missed We're you. glad this will be a flawless uh, Last recording. Last week was a nightmare without you. <laughs> Don't, for, well. don't forget to subscribe so you can hear future episodes and visit our website, letstalkaboutgaystuff.com. You can also follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Let's Talk About Gay Stuff and on Twitter at Talk Gay Stuff. Also, give a listen to our sister podcast at Our Spoopy Podcast, available now. So, we're here. We're queer. Get used to it.